Howdy neighbors, this video that I'm sharing here today is a very advanced video compared to the beginner basic melody videos that I have been sharing. This video is aimed at uh, upper, upper intermediate and advanced students who have been in the Monroe style Zoom workshops for you know two or three years now who have gone through 80, 90, 100 workshops. And so if it's overwhelming, uh, how fast it's going, you know, the terminology, the names of the licks, all that kind of stuff. Um, don't worry too much about it because, you know, this is meant for advanced students. So glean what you can from it. But just wanted to let y'all see what's happening on the advanced side of the workshop. So when we're, stay, when we're saying, you know, here's a staggered, slidey, you know, Santa Claus lick or, or, or whatever, something like that. Um, if you don't know what it means, you know, it's just because this video is made primarily for folks who know all this stuff, who have been working with uh, the language, the devices, all that kind of stuff for, you know, for years now. So that is all a little preface and hope you enjoy it and are able to get some good things out of it. Oh yeah. And if you want to learn how to do all this stuff or a lot of this stuff or some of this stuff, the devices and all that kind of stuff, please go to noiamountainmusic.com, check out the 12 uh, week Monroe style courses. There are many of them, six, seven, eight of them. Send me a email, Christopher at noyamountainmusic.com for any questions you have. The workshop is pretty full right now, but there's a uh, room in the gallery. Like you can come and hang out and watch. Um, and you can get on the waiting list if you'd like to also. So anyway, without further ado, here is the lesson on theme time device work. Hello neighbors and welcome back to the old Monroe style jamming workshop number three, number trace, theme time. All right, so I'm just gonna play a little bit, talk about some ideas, and uh, hopefully there are gonna be a couple of things you can glean from this video that'll help you explore your own creativity. All right, so going to go with the premise that you already know the melody, okay? If you don't know the melody, then you can go back to that, um, or you can go for the first time to that uh, basic beginner melody, get that in your head, and then start to apply some of the modules and devices. All right, here we go. All right, let's just start there. Okay, so starting out with a little slidey. Your first bar, it's great. Go right back into the melody. The way I'm doing that melody. So one E and the two E and getting that nice droning open E. Slide from two to four or three to four. All right, sliding into that uh, 13 double stop there for the G. And I was doing this. Something like that. All right, so this is staggered arpeggio. Then the back half of slidey, three to four on the E. Then bringing it back to the one chord, the A chord, through the fifth fret and fourth fret. A little tag bounce. That one. Low slidey tag there, okay? Um, and you know, you can get the, the nice strong double stop melody 51. It's a nice way to kind of stylize that. A little slidey, like kind of like you know, the first half of slide. But it coming in one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. usually we start sliding on the one. Here we're starting on the two after the fifty one double slide. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And you can get the rest of the melody there. One E and a two E and. Nice way to get that melody uh, different than just doing it there. And then uh, coming down into your G. You know, a little 13, uh, excuse me, 31 for the D, or excuse me, for the G. And then a little different thing there. That's a cool little Monroe thing that he'll do a lot of times, play with the seventh fret, toggling with the open A. So five, four, open, then seven, and then both of them together. OK, 
Okay, so the first place, one of the first places that I'd encourage y'all to start with the B part is slide. You slide all the way through the D, all the way through the A, all the way through the B, and you can slide through the E too, right back to your melody. Or you can do something different on, on the E. Dub lick there that we learned in uh, Sunny Side of the Mountain. And then that's a great lick. If you haven't gotten that one, that's another great one to get. We don't have a name for that one, but that's, you know, kind of slide in 31 with a little goose action there, high major third, ninth fret of the E. Coming down through seven and six, then three and four up and then down on the 7th fret of the D. Back into your melody. Nice, okay. Let's take another gambit. Let's do our staggered slidey. Nice, okay, so staggered slidey, up. That's your stagger, then it's a, it's a hybrid device, so then the back half of slidey right into your melody. And let's try infinity low. Okay, so start on your first fret, infinity. I was getting the last 16th note of infinity to, to modu modulate to the fourth fret of the, the E, and then come down through a little, you know, chordal arpeggio with a blues note, three to four. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay. You can also get familiar with uh, playing the melody out of the 35 position. Okay, so that's your root there, seventh fret of the D. Find your three and your five. And that's your melody right there. You can have pickup notes. Or something like that. You could try to do the, the chromatic thing. Doesn't figure out too easily. I would just usually go. Okay, so that's not exactly the melody for the, the G part, but it works. the melody is really the um the one usually with the harmony on top the three here i was doing the five and the excuse me the three and the five so 35 and, and g nine and five just because it's easy and it works and it's nice you know you could do more of the melody you could do a parallel fifth fifth fret of the d fifth fret of the a or you could do the harmony on the bottom works too, usually you want to have the harmony on the top, or you can go all the way down, a little upstroke on the, either the open A or open D. Little Santa Claus. That's a nice modulated D doublet. coming back down into your chordal A. That's a little tricky move, sliding with your middle finger. That's cool. That's a nice transition from your five chord position back to your one chord position. Do chromatic up to the seventh fret. Or tag it out. The bouncies to the sliding. Okay. So we're getting Santa Claus in there. That's a cool way to do it, you know, get your first, uh, you don't have really a, a name for that. Um, you know, sometimes we call that the goose. And we do it multiple times. Don't have a name for this one. 
sliding up into your 35 and A, 11 and five, excuse me, 11 and seven on the D and A. That's another way to get your D, uh, your G, you know, which would be more melody. That's cool. So 12th fret of the A, of the G, and then the ninth fret of the D. And coming back down into your E. You can just kind of slide into that. grab that open G or whatever is underneath it. It goes by so fast, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now let's try staggering through the B part. Okay, so it's staggering through D. Or you can start, you can start with three strokes on the, the bottom of it. Or just straight up. and then pick up notes into your bounce leg. All right, and you can kind of circle that back around. All right, keeping an eye on Kaya Kitty. Where is she? She's, there she is. Can you see her? There she is. Cute little girl. Can't zoom in. Okay. Cat watch. That's we're picking the Monroe style out. All right. So there's some great ideas. And you can also uh, thread the the D dub lick in there. So that was alternating between the D dub lick and then the staggered uh, arpeggio, and then D dub again in B walking up to your uh, bounce sound. That's a great way to do it. Okay. That's a cool one. That's a good one. Just a little, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, the beginning of the D-dub lick, but it's just more staggered. You can alternate between like you know slidey and the melody. And coming up with your melody low. That's a nice way to use uh, the. Uh, there, she's thinking about going over the fence there. Uh, you know, uh, the infinity in A. A little slidey when you get to the top there, 12th fret of the E. Come down to your 13 double stop, 10 and 7. And then something for your E lick. You know? You know, just big old downstrokes through the whole B part. That could be cool. What was that one? Yeah, it's a little bit of an infinity there, starting your are you on your major third, first fret of the D. I was grabbing the flat seven, which is going to be the fifth fret of the E, because you're in B. Something like that. That's kind of a cool way to get your uh, your uh, flat seven chord, the G, into the E, because the difference between that little G partial chord and the the E partial chord is just one half step you know going from four and five on the D to four and six that would be your G and that'd be your E you know so as you can see
can see this is really expansive. It's a great tune for practicing all the devices. You know, uh, you know, could we do the lick? You know, it's kind of like half the lick. You can walk up. That's a great way to do it. Four, five, six, and catch your upstroke on the seventh fret of the A. exactly like a Monroe device but it's cool you know using the 35 so you're going from a 35 position down transitioning uh, it's a little tricky you got to get down into your D chord so boba it's really okay upstroke on, with your ring finger on the ninth fret of the D and then sliding your middle finger down from the seven Just, you know, use your first finger on the fifth fret of the D also. Same thing in, so it's your 35 in D. You got the same position in A. Try it in B, six and two on your A and E. And up through infinity. Back into your melody. That's some good device work in there. I'm trying to think of, uh, you know, what could we do uh, with the bouncy, you know? You know there's lots you can do with the bouncy. You just gotta kind of hack through it. What's going on there? So you're starting at the top of your, you know, infinity. 12th fret of the E, walking it up, bouncing down, getting your 6th note, which is the 9th fret of the A, alright, you can kind of walk it down the scale, 12, 11, 9, 7, and then you're into your G chord, you have a little quick little double stop on 11 and 7 before coming up into your 13. Uh, double stop, 12th fret of the G, 9th fret of the A. I know this is going by pretty, pretty fast, but you know, just give it a can. Slidey action there, so starting out with the front half of sliding in E, seventh fret of the E, and, and then kind of sliding out with your ring finger a little bit. One E and a two E and a three. One E and a two E and a three, and then sliding all the way down through 35 and E, and then getting all the way down to you know this is low 35 and A, sixth fret of the G, all the way down to your root. That's a good one to get. Okay, so what's going on here? We're working with uh, the folded infinity bounds. Little slotty arpeggio. This is really advanced stuff. I'm just putting some tones and colors in your ear. So it's the infinity pattern 
with a with a folded bounce. So you're, you know, just like you go. That's your folded scale from the high fifth there. That's not something you're you're you know familiar with. That could be a great exercise to, to learn you know, all the all the way up to. me a lot develop speed and precision when you're practicing that so what we're doing is we're using uh, kind of that that folded pattern you know where you're going down three notes and then back to your first note so we're doing it with the infinity pattern and the open strings so it's like an infinity bounce interesting. Here's Kai Kitty. She wants to get in on the action. Hi Kai Kitty. Sweet girl. She's a pretty girl. Still on the show. Yeah. Pretty girl. All right. So this is some stuff that we touched on very briefly early in the Monroe Style Improvising workshop. Kind of advanced stuff, but just some colors there that you can play around with. The trick is to, of course, be able to switch chords. So, so we're going into G for those two beats, A, and then get into your G. And then we're gonna come up through the infinity bounce, starting on the open E, then your what is normally the first note of the major third, sixth fret of the D. And that's all E. And then back into your regular, regular, regular infinity bounce. Uh, or you can start with the, the, the high fifth or the major third. You can also do it from the bottom. You know, just some more colors, some more advanced stuff. But just put some more you know, notes into your heads there, into your ears. Uh, you know, you can hack around and see what you find in there. Most important thing, of course, is just to be able to stagger your way through the chords, slide your way through the chords, play the melody out of 35. Okay, and get some bounce stuff going, get your deep D dub lick, you know. Let's start with staggering through the chords. that flat seven is a transition to get back to your one. You know. you know, it's sliding up to your your high fifth there, 12th fret of the E. And getting into your the, the top of your infinity shape in G. And you come down through your E. Get your seventh back into your one, bounce it out. And go the other way. There's so many different ways that you can connect the different tracks of the arpeggios and the different chords, it's good to hack through it. You know, all the different ways you can do, you know, arpeggiation staggered through the B part. Okay, so that's probably enough. There's so much there to chew on. Follow your you know, musical nose, flavor to taste, and uh, I would really encourage y'all to just, you know, switch and swap with the melody, you know, that's how we do it. All right, we'll see you on the next one.